Welcome to the last pre-build update. I have everything in place to be able to start my build. I've got my kit, I've got all my fasteners sorted, I've got my tools together. There are a couple of things I wanted to bring up before I get into the actual build content, which should be coming to you next week. Uh, the first is we are expecting some new fans from LDO. The fans that shipped with the batch one kits are not terminated properly. They have three pin uh, JST connectors instead of two pin. LDO is sending those replacement fans out to all distributors. So if you did get a batch one kit, we'll be sending those on to you as soon as we get them. As I was printing my parts, I found there was a slight issue with the TPU printed feet for the Milo. Uh, the hole for the M5 heat set was a little too big. Uh, this has been brought up to the design team. In the meantime, I've modified the file to be able to properly install an M5 heat set. Don't know if you can see that, but they now press in. Previously, uh, the hole was too big and the heat set, you could literally just take your finger and push it in. Uh, some people super glued them, but since this is a very structural part, the entire mill sits on these, I wanted to have it anchored well. So I've created a GitHub repository on West3D's GitHub account for Milo information and files. And if you need, you can download the STL for this directly from us, uh, unless between now and when you get ready to print them, the Millennium Machines or Milo teams have updated the foot. There's a safety issue that I want to bring up. This was brought to my attention by one of the design team members, Aramco Phil. I appreciate the, uh, the heads up on this. You should always make sure that your spindle is properly grounded. If it is not, and there's a failure in the motor and the shorts, you potentially could have life-threatening AC voltage present on the spindle. There's a very easy way to check for this. You need to grab a multimeter and continuity test is fine. This is my stepper online spindle, which did not have the proper grounding and I will talk about that more in a minute. But what you need to do is find, on my wire, I'm going to connect to the PE or physical earth pin if you don't have the cabling installed yet, you're going to test pin four of the standardized aircraft connector there. But what you want is if you connect one lead to physical earth, when you touch the body of the spindle, you should hear that beep. And I've got it even at the collet and the motor spindle itself. If you don't hear that, that means that your spindle is not grounded. And again, if there was a short, there could be line voltage at 110 or 220, whatever you're running your spindle at, present here, and this is the biggest piece of metal that has power that you could touch, which is not a good thing. What I had to do was take a short piece of 18 gauge wire, I put a ring terminal on the end, and removed, let me undo my cable here. I had to remove this plastic cover, just pulled it up a little bit. You're going to have to be careful because your motor wire does sneak through there. But what I did was pull this back, saw that there was nothing attached to pin four. So I took that 18 gauge wire attached a ring terminal to one end, put that so that it would be sandwiched in between the plastic case and the metal case where one of these screws goes, solder the other end to pin four, and now this is safety grounded so that if it does short, that voltage has a path to go directly to ground and not through you into the floor and doing a lot of bad stuff. Now, LDO Motors has said that their spindles will be properly grounded. I absolutely trust them. I absolutely would also just do a quick double check to make sure that nothing happened. There isn't a manufacturing flaw. Again, it's your personal safety, so 
taking a minute just to double check you know, your supplier's work will definitely pay off down the road. One of the things I'm going to do with my build is have a touchscreen monitor so that I don't have to bring out a laptop or a tablet to control the mill. I've picked up this inexpensive touchscreen monitor that also has an HDMI input. I've got a Raspberry Pi running just as a host for Chrome. And here you can see I, I actually have the flyboard powered up on my bench. And this is the control interface. So I've got touch available. I can go in one thing. Uh, that I found that is great is there is a built-in on-screen keyboard plug-in within Duet. So if I go up here to the Send Code console and tap, I do get an on-screen keyboard. And I can clear that, go back to the dashboard. I found a tutorial on how to install an on-screen keyboard through the Raspberry Pi software. So if I hit that, I now have a, an on-screen keyboard if I need to run terminal or go into another application. If I need to browse the web, web real quickly, uh, I can do that all directly there and kill that. And I'll make the link to the tutorial on how I added the system-wide on-screen keyboard into our GitHub repository. And the last part of the plan for the Raspberry Pi is I've picked up this RS5 Meanwell 5 volt power supply. I'm going to put this in the Milo itself to be able to power the Pi and the screen. I was originally just going to use a buck converter coming off the main power supply. What I realized is the way the emergency stop switch works, if you hit the e-stop, that cuts power to the power supply, which makes sense because that kills the MCU. So your control board shuts down. There's no power for the motors. That also shuts off the enable relay to the spindle. So your spindle will, sh will stop. You never want to just pull the power on a Raspberry Pi. So if I used a buck converter and there was an emergency, I hit the e-stop, that's going to kill power to the Pi which could potentially corrupt the SD card and the file system. So what I'm going to do is split the power pre-e-stop to feed this power supply so that if I do have to hit the emergency stop button, that'll kill the mill, but the Raspberry Pi will continue to run until I can safely shut it down. That's pretty much where I am at this point. Uh, hopefully tomorrow I start actually putting stuff together and we'll have an update uh, with my assembly next week.